Let's get started building the spaceship. In the models folder in your source assets, go ahead and take the space carrier model and bring that in into the screen. As you can see, it has a uh, diffuse and a normal texture applied to it with a mobile bump diffuse material. Now what I'm going to do is attach some lights onto the carrier itself and also attach a directional light to light at our scene. So I'm going to just create a light with the game object attached. So keep in mind the position of the directional light is irrelevant, only its rotation matters. I'm going to turn off the lights. Not looking for this to be very well lit. I'd like this to be a little darker, but I still want to see my model. And turn off the lights. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm going to name this Sun. Create a new light. I can just du duplicate this light because each light is a component with a drop down box what light it actually is. And I'm going to call this Jet Light or Light Point Jet. In the component field, drop down from directional to point. And let's drag this down to the. I'm going to make this window a little bigger so I can see where I'm going with this. Okay. Let's see how that lights up. I bump the intensity. Considering the jet is going to be permanently on, we might as well have this lit. I'm going to construct the particle effects just for the top jet here. The bottom, maybe in a future game, you can use it for a turbo jet. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now let's uh, construct two more lights. I'm just going to duplicate these and these are going to be for the muzzles. So when the machine guns here actually go off, they will create a sensation of light as well. Okay, and let's put that here. Uh, and I want that to be a little bit more intense. Not that much though. Notice there's a jump here going from 2.2 from 2.3. Why such a jump? Well, that's because there is a render mode importance. Unity decides only to render the brightest lights. So if I do want it to keep, if I do want to keep that light, I can specify this is important and then I won't see such a jump anymore. It'll be gradual. Okay, I've got this light. like that and I want a second light on my left muzzle let's put that here this might look a little uh, too lit but that's okay because these lights are only going to be lit part of the time so I'm going to name this light point muzzle and actually to save resources, I can delete the one to my left and we're going to create a prefab to make the game more efficient. So I'm going to delete this one. You'll see what I'm doing um, in a second. And if you follow previous tutorials, we're going to be constructing a prefab. Okay, so we have, uh, we have this light and we've got our jet. So we've got the two positions where we're going to be releasing the particle effects. So let's get started constructing the jet. 
Now, a rocket engine has a really high displacement of gas. So when the gas oxidizes, it starts releasing it at a really high velocity. So this means that the particle that we're going to be creating is going to be very volatile. Let's get started by creating a particle system. So immediately we see that it's going up instead of to the side, so on the y-axis instead of the x. So while we could add a module to limit the displacement in which axis we want it to go, um, in this case I'm just going to turn it 90 degrees. Now before we specify any of these effects, I'd like to get straight into the module that we haven't covered. You, uh, this is going a little out of the screen, but the one that I'm selecting is Texture Sheet Animation. Actually, I'm going to resize this so you'll be able to see it. Texture Sheet Animation. Uh, rather simple module. I have uh, just how many tiles I have, how much do we want it to loop, and it's how many frames do we want the cycle to cover, and how many cycles do we want. So for this to work, we need a material with this tile already applied. So go ahead in your source assets, go to the material tab, and you'll see one that's called jet. Just take that material and you could uh, drag this into this material field, or you can drag it on the particle system itself and it will apply the material. Okay, and we immediately see all of these textures are now flying out, but they are not cycling. So I'm going to just work this out in the inspector here and not in the particle effects pane. I have, as I see, how many across the X, how many columns? I have two columns and I have four rows. So we see our effect and we see that it is cycling you can see the shrinking here. Um, obviously this is probably not the ideal result that you want for a jet, so let's continue tweaking settings in the emitter. Now the duration is fine, but I do want to limit the lifetime of each particle because I don't want it to spread out that long. Um, let's uh, bring it down a little lower, maybe a little too these are going actually a little too fast considering they'll be traveling a very short distance. The turbulence will be seen even at speeds that are not as high because we don't want a strobe light. Um, let's, uh, let's just put in one is fine. And the start speed, let's set that to one as well. Okay, so that's a little better. The start color and rotation we're going to leave alone. The start color I'm going to tweak a little later in a separate module. Uh, gravity multiplier we don't need. Inherent velocity we don't need for this. Maybe for when we do the smoke, I'll show you the option that you can use it, but I don't think we will be using that in this lesson. The emission. Let's increase that a little bit want a few more, probably 15. Okay, we don't need bursts. Okay, shape is a pretty important one. I currently see that it's uh, definitely too wide and the radius we don't need to be this big either. So I'm going to decrease the radius to say 0.1 and then the angle to Maybe that's probably too small. Let's do eleven. Whoops. Point one. Okay, and let's position this right over the jet. Also something else that I see that this is definitely too big for our particle effects. Let's bring down the size. 
too, it's probably too small. Probably 0 0.6, 0 0.5. bring that within the jet okay going to actually I do want to add one more module that we haven't covered um, this is a pretty simple one um, you don't see it here I'm adding color over lifetime this is actually a pretty important one because uh, currently how we see them popping out this is probably not desired most of the time what we want these particles to do is to fade. Um, in this case, I actually want to tint them a little bit too to give them the effect of fire. So I'm going to... Uh, well, first of all, I actually want to just fade them out. So I'm going to take the alpha here on the top. This is color. This is alpha. And we're going to bring this down to zero. Okay, we see them fading out. Let's bring that actually a little earlier. Something like this. Okay, now I want to apply some color onto this as well. So they're going to be start off a uh, yellow color. This is too acid yellow. This is too orange. That seems to be good. I'm going to bring this down a little further. And I want the flame to end as blue. I only want the tip of my tongue, no pun intended, to be blue. Not it's uh, the entire the entire thing. So I'm gonna bring in yellow here. I accidentally duplicated this. Uh, if you create a second marker to specify color and you don't want it just press command or control delete I'm going to bring in the previous one and I just want just the tip of the color okay let's make that actually probably a little bit more white yellow okay okay the next module we've already set up the texture sheet animation we've got two columns four rows two on the X four on the Y the cycles we're going to leave as they are Frame over time is simply how many frames are covered throughout the cycle. Um, obviously, I can do something, some things which are pretty crazy. I can have them ping pong. So now they go up and then they go down. So maybe if you want something to continuously get bigger and then get smaller, uh, this could be useful. In this case, I just want a linear progression. Okay, and lastly, in the renderer, uh, this is good, but I do want the flames to be a little stretched out, and I'm going to use a stretched billboard. Looking in the back of our particle emitter, we're definitely seeing some problems. We are seeing the sides of these quads, and because of that, they're giving this uh, pinwheel effect. This is probably not what we're looking for. Now, we're going to have a plume of smoke behind this jet, but if you just have a fire without the smoke, it might be worthy to construct a second particle system, which basically has a speed of zero and blocks out the behind of this jet. So if the video game goes directly behind um, any surface in which you have a particle emitter, you want to block it out, you might want to construct a second one, which is then perpendicular to the particle effect that you're using so you're not revealing the uh, man behind the curtains.